Hey gang, Mocha Boy here. Got a, another quick tutorial. Uh, this question was posted on the checking in from the Northeast thread on uh, fpvlab.com where I spend like 90% of my time. And the question was simply if I could go over what um, what a 1.2 gigahertz video to 5.8 gigahertz relay looks like. And this component over here on the right you might recognize. This is the uh, the four channel US version of the one, uh, 1258, 1280 megahertz um, receiver that's sold by ready-made RC. And then on the left-hand side is uh, just a simple 250 milliwatt uh, transmitter. Now this is a little overkill uh, for what I'm doing, but it was what I had in handy, and um, so that's what I decided to use. But uh, just so that you do know, uh, vendors like DPCAV, DPCAV.com, as well as ready-made RC sell, sell micro versions of these transmitters that are just like 25 milliwatts. And when you think about what you're trying to do here, you're, you want to receive a signal here, you want to take that signal and then retransmit it out on 5.8 gigahertz. You're not talking about huge distances, so 25 milliwatts is more than enough. Plus you'll play better with uh, other people flying in your frequency and keeping the, the noise floor relatively low. Now to do this was really simple. This is a 12 volt transmitter, this is a 12 volt, 12 volt receiver. All you have to do is tap the power lines, power and ground, and then tap the uh, tap the video line, and you're off to the races. Now you could have just as easily sent a video out uh, from from here to uh, uh, to the transmitter, uh, but you know I, I wanted to to keep everything slightly sane because uh, you know those those wires do tend to to, to get uh, pretty tangled. Now there is one consideration here when you're doing this, since this is a video tap you are taking a, a signal with a finite amount of uh, voltage and sending it out through 5.8. So what you cannot do is you can't hook this up as well as a video out stream because then you'll be taking the same analog signal and then splitting it. You'll, you may get some signal, but it, it's not going to be a very good signal. You want to make sure that this is receiving the full amount. So uh, when you're running in this configuration, it's going to be either or. So I'm going to open this up and show you uh, what I did to solder this, and um, yeah, and then I'll, gi I'll give you a demonstration uh, on one of the rigs in the building right now. Alright, so the screws are off, and yeah, I mean obviously if you do do this, you'll probably void the warranty on any of these, so uh, you do this at your own... Uh... Yeah, it's okay. There you go. So yeah, just be careful as you're doing this. Now, uh, tapping, tapping the lines is really simple. All you gotta do is just take your four wires and uh, solder them to all of the power leads. So, let's see if I can get a good look here. This is the barrel connector, the 12 volt barrel connector. So, the live <clears throat> or the hot line goes straight into the center pin there. And then there's just enough room over here on the side to uh, solder to the ground plane. Uh, to, to the ground connector there. And then obviously yellow is audio, uh, video, and then uh, blue is audio. Now what, would, what will help while you're doing this is to have uh, some flux handy because uh, you may run into some issues with um, with adhesion. So you know just get get a nice dollop of flux on there before you uh, before you try to solder them in. And obviously pretend the pads, pretend the wires, and then just zap everything together once you're done. And uh, just to finish everything off, make sure you uh, add a little bit of heat shrink on the side. Now what I did do was uh, I drilled a hole in my um, top plate just to, again, just to keep everything kind of neat. But uh, you're going to want that piece of heat shrink right there just so that uh, it resists any kind of fraying. And then uh, once you're all set and ready to go, now there is one thing you are probably going to see, if, if you go with this configuration, you, you will probably see a little bit of banding from um, you know, from the currents that are going through. So it might help to just throw a little snap-on ferrite filter there. Um, I'll be playing around with a couple of different things. I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet, but uh, it's not. It doesn't make the video unusable, but you will notice that it's transmitting some of uh, some of that mess. Now that may actually be because this is a Fat Shark uh, 250 milliwatt receiver. I don't see that kind of banding with the Immersion RC 5.8 gigahertz uh, transmitters. You know, they tend to have better output filtering than than what than what I see on here. So um, yeah. I'm going to hook this up to uh, the ground station and uh, give you guys a quick uh, demonstration of what that relay looks like. Alright, so here we go. Let's um, quickly review this setup. And I, I apologize for the mess here. The uh, my, I'm in the process of rebuilding my ground station and uh, everything 
just is apart right now. So uh, everything's being powder, powered off of a single 3S battery, and then that goes into a power distribution plate, which sends uh, three 12 volt power taps out to the different components, as well as some regulated uh, some regulated outputs to things like the uh, the DVR. Um, then potentially even some just regular power outlets that you can plug pretty much anything into. So over on the right hand side we have the, um, the 1.2 gigahertz uh, receiver and then uh, that's hooked up to the 5.8 gigahertz 250 milliwatt transmitter there. This is a Philips PD9012 um, slave monitor. This, you can find these on uh, eBay for about 50-60 bucks for the pair. Um, you know, they make actually pretty decent uh, slave screens for, for things like ground stations, and they're very cheap. All right, so this is the Uno 5800. Again, you can get that at uh, ReadyMade RC, and then that has a, sim um, a single four-pole connector that goes off into the PD9012. So we're going to be receiving there, transmitting there, receiving here, displaying there, and uh, that's what the connections look like. Now over on here we've got the Hover Things Flip FPV Pro that I'm just about done with uh, for for a local flyer. Um, it's it's an APM powered copter uh, running 1.2 gigahertz video uh, and a bunch of really really nice gear. Um, so I'm going to power this up and then we should see um, <clears throat> we should see what it sees out on the screen. So let me just do that real quick. So that's powering up, and then over here, just go ahead and turn this on. And bang, we've, Oop, hang on a second here, turn this off. Okay, great, so yeah, there we are. We've got um, the copter transmitting on 1.2 gigahertz to that 1.2 gigahertz receiver, which then is relaying the signal over to a 5.8 gigahertz transmitter, video transmitter, 250 milliwatts. And then that's being picked up by that receiver and then being displayed out on the monitor. So yeah, like I said, uh, just keep a few things in mind. Um, try to see if you can source the 25 milliwatt, uh, 25 milliwatt transmitters. Uh, you really don't need to be transmitting on anything larger than that because you're not going to be outside of 50 feet away. And uh, there, there could be issues with airflow and, uh, and heat dissipation, so you're going to want to make sure that it's, it is nice and cool and it's not uh, frying itself. Um, and then the other thing is uh, maybe possibly consider some output filtering or input filtering rather just by sticking a, a ferrite bead or a, a snap on a snap on ferrite choke right about there and uh, Yeah, I think that should just about do it again. This is this is a really great setup especially if you want to keep everything portable and uh, You know relay everything to something like a pair of fat shark attitudes you know, this is uh, pretty much an all-in-one, all-in-one. But with this, and then just this suitcase, or or even just this, and and then that setup right over there, you'll have a completely wireless solution. So, hope that was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, just drop them in the box. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.